Good morning. Good morning. My Good name morning. is Ignacio Ramirez, everybody calls me Iggy. And welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. This is a school and it is not a church. And neither are affiliated with a church or a religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operations of his eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating throughout eternity unto this present day. Now this school is a result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. And we've been incorporated throughout the Cal uh, state of California and other certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established on February 2021. Now, in this school, we used to teach by the true and originated titles for the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the word or son is Elohim. It also been properly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of the physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us, in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name. But Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in the alphabet that would produce sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this name is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in his pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. 
This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now this shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in a divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah. The world calls him Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach on the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build it exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This power consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and the court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in the school to prove that everything in the universe moves and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the 10 aims of the school are as follows. Number one is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. Without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law the so-called law of nature and the powers laid to man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seventh, this deserve and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the devil, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And eighth, is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watcher is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. Okay, I'll give the prayer this morning. And our scripture reading will be Dr. Irene Ramirez. Our scripture lesson is Exodus 12th chapter to the 28th verse. Excellent. Okay, let's so bow our hearts. O oh, Yahweh, according to your purpose, we ask that you bless us with the knowledge and understanding and uh, wisdom intelligence that you gave from the beginning for us to learn. And we ask this all in your holy name, Yahshua the Messiah. Let's all say hallelujah. Yeah, I have some music right now.
Morning, class. Morning. Morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, and I'll be reading Exodus, the 12th chapter, to the 28th verse. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take them every man a lamb, according to the house of the fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the house will be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eatings shall make it account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it up from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorposts of the houses. Therein they shall eat it. And they shall eat and the flesh in, the, in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sonder, nor all with water, but roast it with fire, his head and his legs, and with the prudence thereof. And they shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that it were and that which was remainest of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins skirted, your shoes on your feet, and with your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat of it, eat in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite the firstborn of the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute my judgment. I am Yahweh. And the blood shall be to you a token unto the houses wherein ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plagues shall not be upon you to destroy you. And I will smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Yahweh through your generations. And ye should keep it a feast by the ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first day. Ye shall put away, put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh, that so shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in it seven days there shall be an holy convocation to you. No matter of work shall be done in them, save that which a man must eat, that only may be done to, of you. And ye shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day for in your generation by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at Eve, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one of the twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall ye be no leaven found in your houses, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even the soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land of Egypt. Ye shall eat nothing leavened, in your, in your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. I have read Exodus 12 chapter, and I'm going to read to the 28th verse, sorry. Ye shall not eat nothing leavened in your habitation, ye shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel, and, shall, and said unto them, Draw not and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill it the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssops, and dip it in blood that is in the basin, and strike the lentil and the two side posts with the blood in, that is in the basin. And then shall go out of that door of his house until the morning. For Yahweh would pass through the, and smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lentil and the two side posts, 
Yahweh will pass over the door and will not suffer this destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye come to the land which Yahweh will give you according to he hath promised that ye shall keep the service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What meanest ye by this service? That ye say, It is the sacrifice sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover, who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt. And when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed their heads and worshiped. And the children of Israel went away and did as Yahweh commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Now I have read Exodus, the 12th chapter of the 28th verse. Let's all say, Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, sorry for the hiccups. Uh, we're in a, we have a short crew this morning. Anyway, uh, our first speaker, ah, uh, uh, you know what? My mind is going. I had the pointer in my hand. I set it down. I don't know where. I mean, I just walked over to the, the audio. It is. I don't know. Anyway, you're going to have to use your fingers or a pen or something to point to the chart. Alrighty. Uh, I can actually go try to browse around and see. Just probably won't find it until after class. Yeah, I try to backtrack where I was walking around. You know, it's one of those things. Okay, our first speaker this morning will be Dr. Will Williams. Perceive him in this state of existence. 
So it behooved him to move into this state here. See, this is known as Elohim. See, this is an anthropomorphic state, if you will, and a super incorporeal man. Now, it didn't take all of pure spirit to make this super incorporeal man, just him in part. These attributes assimilate together, okay, in part, not in totality, to make this, okay? Now, when Elohim takes on shape and form, that is considered to be a death. Okay? That's a death. Now, why? It's because he's coming into a lesser state. That is pure spirit state. So this is a death. Now, Dr. Kenley said this was an exodus. This was an exodus out of pure spirit. See? All right? And so, what, what she read in the scripture lesson about the lamb, see, that they ate down here in Egypt, was taken out, was slain here, all right? This lamb portends to this lamb, okay? Uh, I know there's a scripture in Revelations uh, about the lamb, slain before the foundation of the world was that, uh, Revelations. Is it four and eight? Somewhere, yeah. Something. I, don't know. It's just pop I was thinking mind. 12. Revelations. 12, well, maybe. Four and 12, maybe. Four and 12. It's not safe in the foundation. Yeah, well, okay. you found 13, it. Revelation is 13, and um, I'll start at 8. Mm -hmm. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Those names are not written in, in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All right. This is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See, in other words, your salvation was reckoned before anything else came about. See, this is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, all right, now. And so, the lamb here in Egypt is a type of this lamb here. And that's what Dr. Kennedy talks about, the two exoduses. This was an exodus of pure spirit, and then this shape and form here, according to the panoramic vision of Moses, created the creation, or there was a genesis. Here, there had to be a, a sacrifice here. See, there had to be a sacrifice here before an exodus of the Israelites coming up out of Egypt, before Moses could come up here and see this genesis, okay? So that's the two exoduses here, one lamb, is portraying this lamb, okay? See, this is the lamb slain for the foundation of the world, coming into this super incorporeal state, which is a lesser state than pure spirit, or a lesser state than the abstract. See, this is a Passover here. Just like this was a Passover here, it's, this was a Passover here. Maybe I can read that. Because, uh, Uh -huh. I have this. <sighs> okay. I have uh, this big pamphlet here. It's a big, big pamphlet. Okay. That Dr. Kennedy wrote. Yeah, Dr. Kennedy wrote this. Infallible biblical and scientific proof of how, when, where, and for what purpose the universe was created. All right. It's really a condensation of what, what he wrote in the textbook, both copyrighted in 1961 and in 1969, the second edition. 
Okay. Now, uh, I just actually this is really a very good condensation to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, okay. You feel like reading? Yes, I mean. Before the 
before the exodus out of Egypt. See, this, this, what's happening here is reflected over here with the lamb slain in Egypt. See? This is the tale of the two exoduses. The exodus, they had to be, this lamb had to be slain before they exodus out of Egypt. See, that this is this, there had to be a lamb slain here for the exodus out of pure spirit. See? Okay? Alright? Now, this is the first cause of all creation. Okay? Now, I've got to go with this. If you will, isn't there a, supposed to be a, a, a wound or something on the side? Oh, there, there is. It's right here. You can, see, you can see it right here. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Yeah. But there is. There's an incision here. See? Right there. And, uh, and, and see, that's the reason why over here. See? Because the creation here, see, that's why you see half man. The creation comes out of Elohim. Right. Just as the woman, and to reflect that, the woman was taken out of the man. Mm -hmm. See? Okay? So yeah, there is an incision. There's an incision there. Right here. That's exactly right. Let's point that out. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. We have such a high priest 
who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, mm -hmm. a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitch and not man. See, this is the tabernacle that Yahweh pitched and not the man. And this is the universe. Right. Okay? This is the universe. Come back over this way. See, here you have Elohim here standing on the pavement of a sapphire stone. All right. Let's read that. Exodus 24, 9 and 10. See, and, and this is just basic stuff that I'm going through. I mean, this is nothing deep. Well, anything. Actually, none of this is really deep. It's only deep as if you don't know or don't understand it. But once it's been explained mm -hmm. in its simplicity, then it remains deep no more. Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy elders of Israel. And they saw the elder of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a pavework of a sapphire stone. Mm -hmm. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Mm -hmm. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. he laid not his hand. Mm -hmm. Also they saw Elohim, and did eat and drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, good enough. Now, He's standing on a paper of a sapphire stone. See, why is that? See, to understand that, you would have to go to Isaiah 66 and 1. Isaiah? Yeah, 66 and 1. Isaiah 66 and 1. Mm -hmm. Thus saith Yahweh, the heaven is the throne, the heaven is my throne, mm -hmm. and the earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. Where is the house that you built unto me? So yeah, where is the house that you built unto me? See, why? Because I, I built this house mm -hmm. from out the universe. Right. I, I built that house. See, and the universe is in two distinct parts. Right. There's an angelic creation, and then there's a physical creation. Okay. See, Yahweh built that. Okay. Now, Back over here, cosmogony, mm -hmm. the origin of the heavens and the earth, or the universe. That's what the cosmogony means. Now, maybe I should get this up here. Theosophy. Now, <clears throat> theosophy here, this isn't what you're looking at here on this plate, is an exposition of the heart that is in the mist you see over here, in the midst of this cloud. See, because this heart here represents the law of the spirit, or spirit law, if you will. Okay? That's, and, and this spirit law, is all see manifested in the incorporeal and in Elohim manifesting in the physical creation the same spirit law right okay and see not just this is what we'll say and we say it all and we say it many many times we got a tabernacle pattern right got a, an atom. An atom is a proton, a neutron, an electron. Three different parts from one. Or a cell, a nucleus, nucleolus, cell body. Mm -hmm. You know, you speak past, present, future. Or land, earth, sea. You know, just threefold, okay? The pattern. Don't, nothing wrong with that. Okay? However, there's a priesthood that operates in this pattern. See, and that's reflected, like to say, the atom, proton, neutron, electron, all right? Those are the particles in the atom. But in the particles, there are forces. Right. Electromagnetic forces, gravitational forces, nuclear forces, both weak and strong. Why? Because it's a reflection of the priesthood operating between these vessels. See? Okay? It's the same thing. And that's what the laws, the so-called laws of nature are about. 
is really elevated, manifested in part, not in totality, into these individual laws of nature and him performing the work. The law of gravity, you know, the reason why the law of gravity works is because it is Elohim, in part, not in totality, making it work, performing the work. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, that's why Dr. Kennedy used to say, well, Elohim, so one man band, because he's doing it all. Right. He's doing everything. See, what we call the laws of nature, the so-called laws of nature and stuff, and we, and we give them names too, you know, like Newton's law of motion or Ohm's law or Bernoulli's principle, you know, why? Because these were the men that Yahweh died to, to reveal his principle to, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, because it's all Yahweh's law. Right. But Yahweh revealed it to Newton about the laws of motion. He revealed it to Ohm's about Ohm's law, about electricity, or Bernoulli about the way air flows and water flows and principles and things like that, you know. Yahweh, Yahweh is no respecter of persons right. as far as whom he wishes to reveal himself to. Okay, it's what you do with it, see, is, is, is the thing. Will you give him the glory or will you take that glory upon yourself or give it to another? See, that's the thing. Alright, so now here, these hearts, see, Intelligence is the crown. Right. See, it's the first. It's the first one, and it's flanked by wisdom and knowledge. Together, they make up supreme crown. This is the first triad in the, in, in the attributes. See, you can see it here manifested: intelligence and then wisdom and knowledge. See, color is like a covering. Okay. Now, these attributes give birth to the next set of attributes. Beauty, flanked by love and justice. These set of attributes, which is a triad again, gives birth to the next set of attributes. Foundation, power, and strength. See? Alright? And these nine attributes are embedded in the tenth attribute, which is called kingdom. See? See? That's the tenth attribute. It would be like this. We tell you here, here, man by the pattern. You have nine systems in your body that's reflected of the nine major vessels in the tabernacle. But those nine systems are covered or encounced in the tenth system of the body, which is called the integumentary system. Right. We just simply call it just skin. But it is a system. See, those nine, those nine systems are embedded in the tenth system, the skin. Why? Because it's a reflection of these nine attributes embedded in the kingdom. And we have the same over here. See, kingdom. Okay? Matter of fact, we should read that. Matthew 24, 30, 25, 34. We should read that. Matthew 25 or 24? Matthew 25, 34. Then said the king, say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepare for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and he gave me food, and I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was stranger. I was a okay, stranger. That's good enough. Okay. That, that, it just shows the kingdom before the found. See, this was before the foundation of the world, or right? before anything else was created. This kingdom was set up. This lamb was slain. It was set up. Before anything else came about, this, the salvation was set up. Okay? Right. Now, here, cosmogony, we have this heart here. Spirit law representing eternity. Okay? Maybe we should get this in. Second Corinthians twelve and one. Second Corinthians twelve and one. Mm -hmm. It is not expedient for me doubtless, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions 
and revelations of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. I knew man in the Messiah more than 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Yahweh knoweth. Such a one caught up into the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Yahweh knoweth. How that he was caught up into glory and heard unspeakable words, which it, which it is not possible for a man to utter. Okay, good enough. Now, we have it. We have these heavens depicted here. Right. This is the third heaven, which is eternity, or, or spirit law. And then here we have the division between spirit and matter. We have these angels here. Why? Because it's showing you that this is representative of the angelic or incorporeal creation, which is the dividing line between spirit and matter. See, coming through the veil. See this heart coming through the veil. Anytime you cross a veil, there has to be a transition. This heart, in part, not in totality, transformed into one hydrogen atom. See, the first, the first particle, the first matter. Okay, all right. And this is the second heaven because here you have this where the gases are at. All right, and then you have the division between the first and second heaven. See, from the atmosphere here to the first heaven. Right. Here you have the, you know, see here now this, this atom, this one, see, all, all Elohim did was create one hydrogen atom and told that atom, be fruitful and multiply. One became two, two became four, four became eight, etc. Until it came, it came here, crossing the veil, and became this, as Dr. Kinley put it, this uh, amalgamated conglomeration of a coring mass, and this is in the first heaven, see, which is space. Even space had to be created. See, this represents the bottomless pit, right. the first heaven. All right, here we have the second heaven. Here we have the third heaven. See, but this is in a descending fashion here. All right, and out of this is how the universe, the physical universe, was created galaxies and all. I mean, this is tame. I mean, I mean, can you imagine how massive an object this was? That even the galaxies, the stars right. and all that could be because see, because they, they tell me that there are more stars mm -hmm. in the universe than there are grains of sand on the earth. That 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 ought to tell you something. That's like that's like innumerable, really. See? And stars are a type of the angelic creation. Right. So yeah, we'd have to reflect that, okay? So this is how, this is coming into play, all right? See, the thing is, Elohim is building a sanctuary, and he's going to, and in this sanctuary, he is going to be the high priest right. in that sanctuary, okay? All right, however, for us to understand anything about priests and stuff like that, he had to create a physical priesthood and a physical tabernacle. See, he had to create the Levitical priesthood and the physical tabernacle to reflect what the real tabernacle and the real priesthood was like, or is rather, okay? Now, let's see, where can I go with this? Um, just understanding that this universe, see look, your physical body is a reflection of the universe at large, okay? <clears throat> and we've done this too many times, but I'll, but I'll do it again. See, here you have and over, which is an unfertilized day, okay? All right, and then you got, uh, got Sammy Sperm here, he's on his way to fertilize, all right? Now, he's not the only one. He's got 59 million, you know, million brothers and sisters that's, you know, that's, that's on his heels, you know? In fact, they're all coming in a crowd, and they all crowd up around this egg. 
All right, because the first one there isn't necessarily the first one who's going to get in. Right. See, in fact, it takes all of the sperm, all of these sperm, the surrounding it to put pressure on the egg, just so it would crack. Oh, so it would crack just enough for one sperm to get in, mm -hmm. and when that one sperm gets in, you know, it's like a flash of light, like the flash of the Shekinah, you know, when it's fertilized, and then the head get in, and the tail is cut off, and now this fertilized ovum has now become a zygote, mm -hmm. all right? But even if in this stage, it's still considered to be one cell. Right. Then this process kicks in. Mitosis, which is cell division. And then one becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, eight becomes 16, so forth and so on. And then trillions of cells later, voila, it why? Why did it happen like that? Because that's the way the universe comes in. You come in the same way the universe comes in. You're a reflection of that. Comes in the same way by one hydrogen atom, by one atom. That told me fruitful and multiply. That's what he told the atom. Why? Didn't he tell somebody else around here? What did he tell them? Told, told these people up here. Yeah, be fruitful and multiply. And add them. Okay, get it? See? Be fruitful and multiply. So now that's the purpose, and I should tell you right there, that's the purpose of Yahweh. To be fruitful and multiply, that is part of the purpose of Yahweh. Right. So if that be the purpose of Yahweh, then the mystery of iniquity, what can his purpose be? Opposite. It's got to be the opposite. His purpose is not to be fruitful and multiply, but to, but to enact birth control. Right. So that you don't become fruitful and multiply. See? Birth control. See, whereas he himself, you know, he, he has an innumerable host himself. Right. You know, and he's, and he's building up and he's, you know, but, but at the same time, he's going to try to negate what Yahweh has done or, or is doing, which is what he was set up to do, okay? Now, the spirit law is what operates everything. And it's by spirit, see. When I grew up, I used to be into this mental mind, you know, thing, this universal mind thing. I, I used to be into that. You know, I used to think, well, by the power of my conscious mind, you know, I could uh, do this and that, you know, move mountains, all this kind of stuff. You know, that's how they would have me believe. But here's the problem with that. See, mind, is subject to change. Right. And it's either going to change in one or two directions, either for better or for worse. Okay? Now, this is what they taught me in psychology when I, went, when I used to practice hypnosis. They said this, they do a circle, this is your, your conscious mind. This would be your subconscious mind. And then everything else out here in the white part, that would be the universal. The universal mind, okay? Now here's what Dr. Kennedy said. How do you know where to put this line? How do you know this line goes here? That's what he would say. How do you know this line goes here? See, what is the criteria that separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind? There really isn't. Oh, they'll tell you, well, the conscious mind does this, that, and the other, and the subconscious mind will do that and the other. You know, I know I, I've taken psychology. I, I used to be a psych tech, to be honest with you. And read all of the masters, you know, Piaget, Skinner, you know, you know all these guys. Uh, what's the guy, the father of psychology, was the name of? Uh, I can't see you know, I'm the brain freeze now. But yeah, um, yeah, well, gosh, what's his name? <laughs> Not Einstein. Huh? Not Einstein. No, he wasn't, no, he was a physicist. He was a physicist. He's not a psychologist, okay. 
Same with Freud. Uh, uh, Sigmund. Yeah, sometimes the yeah. brain freeze. You know? Yeah, Sigmund Freud, Skinner, and uh, who else? Uh, this, this one guy was into visions and stuff, Carl Jung. He was into that. I thought, I, I thought he was fascinating because he would always talk about types and archetypes and stuff, you know, his psychology and whatnot. And Skinner, Skinner was a very well known behaviorist, behavior psychology. Piaget, Maslow, I like I liked Maslow. Maslow had the seven steps of, you know, maturity, you know, from infant all the way up to old age. He had that kind of thing. So, so they all have their theories of what they think, you know, the mind is like. You know, what, where does the, you know, what are the boundaries of the mind? See, this kind of stuff. Now, Dr. Kennedy wrote in this textbook. He said, look, there's no such thing as a subconscious mind. And, I, and I'm inclined to believe, even though I used to believe that there was, because I'm an ex-hypnotist myself. But now I understand that, that really what it is, it's just different forms of consciousness. Mm -hmm. See, there's nothing sub about it. See, and the only thing universal is not mind, but spirit. Because spirit does not change. Right. Whereas mind is subject to change. See, so the thing is, how do you know to put the line here? How do you, you know, how do you know to, and another thing, how do you know to transfer from what's in the conscious mind to the subconscious mind, which is somehow get it to the universal mind, get it to the mix into the universal mind, will reward that which the conscious mind mm. came up with. See, that's the whole idea behind it. However, it simply does not work that way. See, and the thing Dr. Kinley said was this, this was the, one of the bigger flaws of the concept of universal mind with the conscious, subconscious, subconscious. Conscious, subconscious, and unconscious or universal mind. Because there's no quite, there's no dividing line. There's no real clear cut definition between the differences of these states, like it is in the tabernacle pattern. See, in the tabernacle pattern, you have veils. Right. See, you have veils. See, that divide between each state. And when you pass through a veil, there's a transition from one state to another, see. See here, so you have abstract, intermediate, concrete, all right? <clears throat> Let me give you an idea of what I mean by that. Transitions. We'll take H2O which I hope everybody knows is a very common compound, right. right? It's water. All right. Now, if I were, now, in its, in its highly uh, heated state, H2O is a steam or it's gaseous. Right. Now, if it cools below a certain temperature, say 212 degrees Fahrenheit, See, this in principle is a veil. So when it cools below this temperature, it crosses a veil, which means it makes a transition from steam to water, okay? Now, if it keeps cooling down, particularly past 32 degrees, th this temperature, which is 32 degrees, this is another veil. If it cools below this veil, then it makes another transition to ice. But the chemical composition of H2O has not changed right. in none of the states. See, that's like abstract, intermediate, concrete, or pure spirit, incorporeal creation, physical creation. Okay? Because in the trans in the because in the transition because spirit passing through a veil has to make a transition. Right. See. Likewise with H2O. See, if I start off with ice and I heat it up, once it heats past 32 degrees, ice will make a transition to water because it's crossing a veil. Keep heating some more. Water, if it heats past 212 degrees, it crosses a veil, makes a transition from water to steam, but it's still H2O. It's the same way with spirit, see? It's still Yahweh, 
Yahweh pure spirit, Yahweh corporeal, Yahweh in the physical. And there's a spirit law that is operating in each of right. these states, which is Elohim. He is doing the operating. Okay? Now. You know, I hear people say that this change it changes from one from steam to water and from water to ice. Actually, it's not changing because you just said it remains the same composition as H2O. In other words, it's transitioning, right? Right. It's just making a transition from one state to another. Mm -hmm. But H2O, the compound, right. that does not change. See? And it's manifestations. See? Okay? Now, let's, let's see what's going with this. Let's get 12, uh, Genesis 12 and 1. Let's see what I can do with this. Genesis 12 and 1. Yeah, Yahweh hath said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great generate a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as Yahweh had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram had, was the seven Seventy and five years old when he departed from Haran. Okay. Now, Abraham was drawn out and he was he he was the first Hebrew. Right. I said let me put it this tell it to me bluntly. He was the first Hebrew. And see that means what does that mean? Well that means simply this. He was the one that came across the river. I don't have a good map of it here, but it's like right here. The Euphrates River. The Euphrates River that went through the land of Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. All right? The so-called cradle of civilization. When Abraham crossed the river Euphrates, coming down from the south, coming into Canaan's land, that made him the first Hebrew. See? The word Hebrew means one from across the river. Now, when he came across, okay, he was the first Hebrew, and we just read Yahweh made him a promise that through his seed, singular, all the families of the earth would be blessed, okay? Um, let's see. Well, I was going to go to 15 and 12, but I don't want to go there yet. I want to, I want to, I want to, uh, I want to drag this out a little bit. Because see, Abraham walked length and breadth of Canaan's land, right. and he never set foot on the promised land. However, because he was given a promise, that promise had to be confirmed. Okay? Right. Right? Now, get uh, Genesis 14, and we read the 14th chapter. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphiel, king of Shinar, and Rochkin, king of Elazar. Kilimamea. Kilimamea, king of Elam, and Pidal, king of nations. The, that these made war with Bura, king of Sodom, and with Bur Bursa, king of Gomorrah. Shinnabah, king of Amadama, and Shemember, king of Zebulun. Mm -hmm. And the king of Bela, which is Zorah. All these were jointed together in the bell of Shin Shadim. Okay. Now, this is war that was breaking out in Canaan's land, okay? Now, jump down to. Uh, uh, eight. And there went out the king of Sodom, mm -hmm. and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Ad Adman, mm -hmm. and the king of Zebulun, and the king of Bela, 
the same as Zerah, and they joined battle with them in the Vale of Sidon, which Chilodorla, the king of Elam, and the Tidal, king of nations, and Amr, Am Amram, the king mm -hmm. of Shinar, and Archie, king of Eleazar. Four kings with five. And the veil of Sodom was full of slime pits, and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. And they were renamed, remained, and they that remained fled to the mountains. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their rituals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother, son, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And they came, one that had escaped, and told Abram and the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Meir, and Amorite brother of Eskel, and brother of Anna, and these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, his army, he trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, and he and his servants by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hoba, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the woman also, and the people. And, king of, and the king of Solomon went out to meet them after his return from the slaughter of Chador Lamar and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shemel, which is the king's dell. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was a priest of, the, of El Elam. And he blessed him and said, Bless be Abram of El Elyon, possessor of heaven and earth, and bless be El Elyon, which had delivered thy enemies into the hand, and he gave him tithes unto all. Okay. And so now, <clears throat> I know that was a bit long, but that's the battle of the five kings that mm -hmm. invaded Canaan's land, and, and Abraham and his confederates banded together and, and dealt with them, especially after they took his nephew Lot. Right. And this goods and also they, they went after it. Alright? They, they battled and they won. And all the goods they brought back that they had plundered these other kings and plundered, they brought all these goods back plus their own. And they gave Abraham gave a tenth portion to Melchizedek. See, king and high priest of Salem. Alright? Now, Melchizedek. You're not going to find him in the history books. In fact, you can look him up in the encyclopedia, and, and I'll tell you this. What the encyclopedia is going to tell you is, right. well, the Bible says, <laughs> the only reason why we know Melchizedek existed is because Abraham existed, and Abraham said Melchizedek existed. Because he said he was blessed by him. Okay? Now, let's just look at this. He gave him a tenth portion of what he had. Now, let's look at this by the pattern. I see and compare, uh, let me see if I can find a bigger part. Oh, okay, let me, let me get this one. Here's Abraham. He's being blessed by Melchizedek. Here's Melchizedek. He's overshadowing 
Abraham and he's blessing the seed mm -hmm. in his loins. Right. It's still alive. That's just like the angels here overshadowing the mercy seat. And see, in the Ark of the Covenant, around the tables of stone was placed in the Ark of the Covenant. See, just like, see here, that seed was placed in Abraham's right. loins. All right? And see, and, and even and Melchizedek is the king and high priest of Salem. All right? Now, um, I might as well read it. Hebrews. Hebrew, we'll start with Hebrews 6.19 because see, Yahshua the Messiah is going to come after the order of Melchizedek. Right. Mind you, he's going to fulfill the Levitical priesthood. But, he, but see, but he's going to replace that with a better priesthood. Mm -hmm. You want Hebrews 6.19? Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Which hope we have as an anchor of soul, both sure and sent past, mm -hmm. and, and which entered into that within the veil. Mm -hmm. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Yahshua made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. After the order of Melchizedek, not Levi, but after the order of Melchizedek. Why? We're going to read. Seven. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem's priest of the Most High El, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, mm -hmm. and blessed him, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave tenth part of all, being first being by interpretation king of righteousness, mm -hmm. and after that also king of Salem. King, let's see, king of righteousness. That's what Mel the name Melchizedek means, king of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And he was king of Salem, which means king of peace. Which is the king of peace. Go ahead. Whose father and mother were not recorded in the genealogies as such, neither the beginning of his days nor the end of his life. Now, his genealogy was not recorded. Right. That's why you're not going to find him in the history books. Mm -hmm. When Moses, who wrote the book of Genesis, who, by way of vision and revelation, when it came to Melchizedek, his genealogy, and his, he was told not to write it. Not the right his genealogy at the beginning or any. Why? Because he's going to be drawn out. Talking about Melchizedek, drawn out as a type of an everlasting priesthood. Okay? Keep going. But being a representative of the Son of Yahweh for the continuance of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And barely they that were are the sons of Levi, who received the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that this of their brethren, though they might come out of the loins of Abraham. All right, now, they had, by the law, mm -hmm. talking about the Levites, who, who operated in this tabernacle. The Levites, see, did not receive a plot of land up here in Canaan. Right. They did receive 48 cities, though, but not a plot of land. So tithes were ordered, according to the law, from these different tribes. They would give a tenth portion to the Levites so that they could take care of this tabernacle and, in time, take care of the temple here on Mount Moriah. Okay? They took tithes, see, so this could have an upkeep, all right? But read. But he whose descent is not counted from them mm -hmm. received tithes of Abraham. Now see, now he whose descent is not of them, Melchizedek, received tithes from Abraham. Go ahead. And blessed him. And, and, he, and Melchizedek blessed him. That had the promise. That had the promise. Abraham that had the promise. He, Melchizedek blessed him that had the promise. Right. Go ahead. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed by the better. And there a mortal man, mortal man received tithes, but there he received them, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth forever. Mm -hmm. That it is witnessed mm -hmm. by this, aided by Melchizedek being drawn out. 
having no genealogy, no pedigree, no beginning, no ending of days. It, it's drawn out that he liveth forever. That's the point of Melchizedek. Okay, read. And if I may say so, Levite also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. Now how did that happen? Read. For he was yet in the loins of his father. Mm -hmm. Then Melchizedek met him. When Melchizedek met him, Levi was there, and he received the blessing too. <laughs> so it's going it's to tell you, keep reading. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood. Uh, now, if, if perfection was by this priesthood here, which this tabernacle operated under, which was a continual burning of sacrifices, and these priests, you know, working, you know, their butts off every day. Once a year, the high priest had to go up here on the Day of Atonement with the sacrifice and had to see the flash of the Shekinah, or else the sins of Israel would not be forgiven. Right. This is something they had to do. This was a hard labor here. Okay, just let me know, but keep reading. But now, if, it, now if, if, there, if there was perfection under this hard labor, read. For under it, the people received the law. Uh -huh. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek mm -hmm. and not be called after the order of Aaron? Mm -hmm. For the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity a change also of the law. Now, because of Yahshua the Messiah, right. see his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, the priesthood has changed. Mm -hmm. So because the priesthood has changed, then it is of necessity that this law change. Mm -hmm. See, because this law, see, was, you know, was given and it was perfect for this tabernacle, for a Levitical priesthood. But see, but this law is incongruent with the Melchizedek priesthood. Right. This law had limitations. Whereas, 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 and not only that, the priests who operated under this law in this tabernacle, see, they could only operate from the time when they were 30 years old until the time they were 50. And right. they had to retire. One priest replaces another. See, Aaron was the first priest, but he couldn't serve forever. When he died, his sons took over, and so forth and so on. And that's the way it is with everything. See, your priest dies, another priest takes over. Your guru dies, another guru takes over. Your teacher dies, another teacher takes over. Your sensei dies, another sensei takes over. Your dean dies, another dean takes over. <laughs> See? No priest serves, nobody can serve forever. Right. See, see, your iman, he can't serve forever because when he dies, another iman has got to take over. Doesn't matter who it is or what it is. It's not like Melchizedek. Right. See, a, a priesthood that lasts forever. No beginning, no ending of days. Keep reading. For he of whom? These things are spoken pertaining to another tribe, mm -hmm. of which no man gave attendance at the altar. Mm -hmm. For it is evident that our Savior sprang out of Judah, of which the tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. Mm -hmm. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arise another priesthood. See, after the similitude, after the see, this is, this is Yahshua. His death, burial, resurrection. His resurrection showed you that he is a high priest after the similitude of Melchizedek, having no beginning or ending of days. That means not subject to death. Right. Because if Melchizedek had a type is drawn out having no beginning or ending of days, that means he's not subject to death. Talk about Melchizedek. Right. So now here comes another after the similitude of Melchizedek, not subject to death. See, keep reading. Who is made not after the law of carnal or of carnal commandments, mm -hmm. but after the power of an endless life? After the power of an endless life. See, this is a life-giving spirit. Right. See, endless life. See, read. For he testified, "Thou art a priesthood forever after the order of Melchizedek." Mm -hmm. For there is verily 
of disknowing of the commandment going before for the weakness of unprofitableness thereof. Now, the weak, now because there's a priest now, that's after the order of Melchizedek, then this law is no good. It's weak. Mm -hmm. right. It's weak. What does it say? It's unprofitable for you to try to use this law right. and apply it to a Melchizedek priesthood, which is a which is an eternal priesthood. Right. Mm -hmm. Continue. For the law made nothing perfect. Mm -hmm. This this law it, this law couldn't make this it could not make your soul perfect. Let's just get real. It just couldn't, it just didn't have that power to do that. It could not make your soul perfect. See, so it had to be, it had to be gotten rid of. Yeah. See, go ahead. But the bringing in of a better hope did, mm -hmm. by the which we draw nigh unto Yahweh. And as much as notwithstanding an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. Mm -hmm. But this was with an oath by him that said unto him. These priests were, were not made without an oath. In other words, they, they got it because it was hereditary. Because they were descendants of Aaron. Huh? See, what family was you in? Oh, I'm, I'm in Aaron's family. Oh, well, you can be a priest. Mm -hmm. There was no oath involved. You just had to, you had to be the right family. See, but here, see, Yahshua made an oath and he swore and he would not repent. Right. See, Yahweh made that. He said, Thou art. He told Yahshua, he said, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. You know, your endless life, endless priesthood, no beginning, no ending of days. Read. But this was an oath by him that said unto him, Yahweh swore and will not. Repent. Mm -hmm. Thou art a priest forever mm -hmm. after the order of Melchizedek. Read. By so much was Yahshua made an assurity of a better covenant. See, so much was Yahshua made an assurity of a better covenant written in the heart and mind. It's a better covenant. The reason why it's a better covenant is because it has a better priesthood to operate in. The covenant has to match the priesthood. See, this covenant, see, the priesthood was an eternal covenant, an eternal priesthood, so this has got, it's got to reflect that, this covenant, it's got to reflect that. See, go ahead. And they truly were many priests, mm -hmm. but they were not su su suffered to continue by reason of death. No, I'm saying, they, they, could, they couldn't continue forever by reason of death. Right. They couldn't suffer, you know, Aaron died, his sons took over. Like I said, these people died, and somebody else got to take over. A pope dies, another pope takes over. They could not, they were not eternal. Mm -hmm. And see, by reason of death, see, they could not continue. No one can, no doctor can. Show me a doctrine in the world that can continue, whereas many priests can continue without death. It just doesn't, mm -hmm. you, you, you just don't got it. Cause They'll die. But Yahshua, see, Yahshua is a priest <laughs> forever. After the order of Melchizedek, the beginning or the ending of days. Go ahead. But he, because he continued ever, had an unchangeable, unchangeable priesthood. So he has an unchangeable priesthood. And, and because of that, read. Therefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto Yahweh by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. See, he ever liveth to make intercession. He, he is not going to die. Right. And they say, oh, well, well he dies, so we got to wait for a replacement. No. no, he liveth forever, always making intercession unto the Father for us. Okay? All right, that's good enough there. And see, and that's, and we didn't even get out of this. We, we hadn't even got down to here yet. We, we, we got just so much up here. Right. Okay? And so now here, Abraham receives his promise. And then, uh, uh, let's go back. And I have comments at the time. Uh, Genesis uh, 15, I think it's 15, 15 and 12. Okay. 
No, no, not that, not that, not that, not that. Um, uh, all right, let me talk a little bit before we. Okay, now, Abraham's given the promise, all right? And that promise, they said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Right. All right. In Isaac. But then now Abraham went off and said, well, I need. He went and got another son by Hagar, all right, because it wasn't, you know, I guess it wasn't fast enough for me. So he went under Hagar and had Ishmael, right. all right. But Ishmael was cast out. Now, this is another lecture because the time that Ishmael spent with Abraham, 15 years, when he was cast out, those years were cut out of Abraham's life, okay. However, Ishmael was 40 years old here right. when Isaac is offered up here, okay? Now, here you have Isaac. He's, uh, he's born into the world, and, uh, and he's a type of Yahshua, the Messiah, all right? And they, and they had a party for him, you know? They, they, uh, well, let's read that. Genesis 20 and 21. Yeah, you can start there, 21 and 1. 21 and 20? 21 and 1. Okay. And Yahweh remembered Sarah, as he had said. And Yahweh said unto Sarah, as he had spoken. And Sarah conceived and married Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which Elohim had spoken to him. And Abraham called the son of his the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised son Isaac, being eight days old, as Elohim had commanded him. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Mm -hmm. And Sarah said, Elohim had made me to rejoice, so that all that hear will rejoice with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should give children suck? For I have bore a son in his old age, mm -hmm. and the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the day that Isaac was weaned. Okay, he made a great feast the day Isaac was weaned. They brought presents and stuff like that. All that stuff. Because you can compare this. This is one of these affinity plates that I always call. You can compare this to the birth of Joshua. Joshua's uh, uh, the birth, his, his birth, the uh, conception, his birth and flight. Yeah, that's what it is. Conception. You can compare that to this. See, but I won't do it today because we don't have that much time. But continue reading. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, which she had bore unto Abraham, mocking. Mm -hmm. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondswoman. Mm -hmm. And her son, for the son of this bondswoman should not be heirs with my son Isaac. Mm -hmm. And and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight on the account of his son. And Elohim said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondswoman, in all that Sarah hath said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So he said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Nobody else. He, and he said it by name. Come on. Elohim. Right. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And also of the son of the bondswoman, bondswoman will I make a nation because he is thy seed. Mm -hmm. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took the bread and the bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away, and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And the water was spent in, of the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Mm -hmm. And she went and sat her down over against him a good while off, as it were a bull shot. For she said, let not me see the death of, my, of the child. Okay, so now as far as Hagar was concerned, Ishmael, was dead and buried. Right. Cause she took him and she hid him under a shrub mm -hmm. and then she walked off away by the bow shot. And that's like, I would say like a hundred yards. That's about the length of a football. Mm -hmm. All right, 
walked away and said, let me not see the death of this child. So as far as Hagar was concerned, Ishmael was dead right. and buried. Okay, continue. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. Mm -hmm. And Elohim heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of Elohim called to Hagar mm -hmm. out of the heavens and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for Elohim had heard the voice of the lad, for he is. Arise, lift up the lad. You can arise, go back to where you left him, and lift him up from under the shrub that you left him. Lift him up. That's a resurrection. Right. See, that's a death, burial, resurrection being performed for Ishmael. And that gave Ishmael faith, because those are the witnesses, see, that point to that one, see. Yeah. Uh, keep reading, say anything else. And hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. Okay. Okay, that's good enough. All right, now, Ishmael was cast out when he was 15. Now, however, when this event happened here, Isaac is 25 years old, and Ishmael, is 40 years old at the time, see? And the birth of Isaac, that represented the, the light, the bread, and the intercessor that's manifested with, with Isaac in, in a type, because Isaac is a type of Yahshua, the Messiah, okay? So now we're coming on down through the, you know, through the veils here, and we're coming here to, I think it's the 22nd chapter of Genesis, let's read that while we have the time. And it came to pass, after these things, Elohim did prove Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offerings upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, mm -hmm. and took two of his young men with him, mm -hmm. and Isaac his son, and clay and the wood for the burnt offering. I said, hey, go ahead. And rose up and went unto the place where Elohim had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye the here with the ass, and I will, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Okay, so now. <clears throat> on the third day, see, on the third day, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. He's that he's taking Isaac to Mount Moriah to offer him up. Okay, All right. Isaiah, Isaac has wood on him. He's carrying the wood up the mountain. Why? Because see, that's just like Yahshua. Mm -hmm. See, when uh, <clears throat> when he was on, when they condemned him to die, he had to carry his cross. Mm -hmm. up to Golgotha, and Golgotha means place of the skull. So he had to carry his cross. So he's fulfilling. place 
which Elohim had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife and s to slay his son. And the angel of Yahweh called unto him out of the heavens, and said, Abraham, Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest Elohim, mm -hmm. seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, him a ram caught in the thickets by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for burnt offerings instead of his son. Mm -hmm. And Abraham called the place where he, that the place Yahweh, as it was called in this day, Yahweh will provide. Okay, now. Here we have Isaac, Abraham receiving Isaac back from the dead because in his mind, because remember we were told up here, and Isaac shall thy seed be called. So as far as Abraham was concerned, Isaac, you know, is the one. So, so it wasn't no thing for Abraham to offer him up when, he, when Yahweh told because in Abraham's mind, oh, well I'll offer him up, but Elohim is going to bring him back to me because he told me. And Isaac shall thy seed be called. See? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll conclude with a couple of minutes here. Uh, let's get Hebrews, uh, I think it's 11 17, right quick. Yes. 11 and 17? Yes. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only son, mm -hmm. of whom it was said that in Isaac shall they see be called, mm -hmm. accounting that Yahweh was able to raise him up even from the dead. From hence also he received him in a figure. See, that's what we should, this is the illustration here. He raised him up from the dead and received him in a figure. See, that's a type of a resurrection. Here's the angel, here's a type of spirit. Right. Here's Isaac on the altar, and the fire is getting ready, and Isaac is sweating, he's got perspiration, that's water. But then Abraham's hand is stayed by the angel and shown this lamb was caught in the thickest. Why? Because Yahshua Messiah, remember, he had a crown of thorns right. on his head, you know. And so, so the lamb, so this, this ram took Isaac's place, mm -hmm. but it's showing you, see, the death, burial, resurrection of Isaac right. that points to the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. Okay? All right, uh, we have to get out of here, unfortunately, so we're going to, we're going to conclude this, and, uh, and we, uh, let's see, I won't be here next week, or for a couple of weeks as I'll be on the road, I plan to leave tomorrow when I'm going to the seminar in Chicago. Okay? And it should be quite interesting and a lot of people are going to be there. Hopefully they'll get a, get a chance to live stream it. That'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for, for watching. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to close early today. We've had so many cock-ups. <laughs> it ain't funny. But that's all right. You know, we'll mow through it. You know, Yashua's got us. So thank you for watching and thank you for, for studying with us. We hope everything was said that was edifying. As always, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he truly is your only hope of glory. And with those two words, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, thank everybody for listening in and being with us on this class day. Uh, here's uh, our uh, uh, 
directions and addresses you can contact us with if you want to order a, a pamphlet, uh, a chart book, or a chart. Okay, it's still getting them. Um, uh, also, uh, if you want to make a donation, you can make a donation up to this right here. Uh, you can look back on the video and freeze it. That way you can get all the stuff down. But, uh, yeah, you know, nobody gets paid here, but uh, we are growing a little bit, getting our things together. So with that, uh, so I'll stand me dismiss with the doxology. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present your fallen with his presence with exceeding joy. To the only way to tell him our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah Sovereign, we have glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both for all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have one for the book.